Welcome back, warriors, to another rusty and or musty bout of the worst fighting game, the tiring tournament of terribleness to crown the undisputed woat of the legendary genre known as the Button Basher. On this week's card, we have... Oh, oh God, look, look, there he is! There, he's just mocking us from on top of his chair, made of corpses and gristle. We'll take him down one day, I swear it. Yeah, so with that in mind, why don't we try a different tactic? Why don't we enlist the services of a bunch of ancient adversaries from across history to hopefully cut Pit Fighter down to size? And I can't think of a more bumbling bunch than the cast of Spike TV's Deadliest Warrior. Yes, this 3D weapons-based fighter has been a constant request from many of you, and is considered a prime example of corny licensed shovelware dumped onto digital storefronts circa 2010, as was the style at the time. But will its clunky gameplay, lack of content, and dead online ecosystem be enough to execute the not-so-mighty pit fighter? Well, we won't know for sure until we get it in the ring! In 2007, after Godzilla Unleashed belly flopped onto store shelves and didn't really ingratiate itself with many fans, its developer Pipeworks Software found itself at a crossroads. With Atari seeing an internal restructuring, and with one of their senior producers who just so happened to be a big Godzilla fan also having left, Pipeworks had to seek whatever work they could, which of course meant video games based on licensed TV shows. Merv Griffin's Cross Crosswords, Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune, we are talking about the absolute doldrums of the industry here. So it's no surprise then that at the 2009 Spike Video Game Awards, that Spike announced that they were publishing a game based on Spike's TV show, Deadliest Warrior, which, for those that don't recall, was a show that tried to answer the question that has plagued the universe for thousands of years, who would win, a pirate or a ninja? The results of each episode were largely based upon whoever the producers and writers wanted to win that day, because while it fancied itself as something of a scientific-based show, it was essentially just fantasy booking. Translating that into a video game, of course, would prove tricky. Should you throw out the show's surface-level adherence to historical accuracy, or embrace the silliness and go full fighting game bollocks? Sadly, in this case, it was the former. Pipeworks tried to model Deadliest Warrior's gameplay systems on Lightweight's Bushido Blade, which, you know, is certainly a better idea than modeling it after their 2001 effort, uh, Kabuki Warriors. Oh. One of the other problems they were trying to crack was to somehow offer an experience that anyone could pick up and play, but also offer a ton of depth to hardcore fighting fans. Now, most games in 2024 still struggled to find this balance, so it was a little uh, doubtful that a licensed game with a minuscule budget would be able to find that magic formula. As it turns out, this was accurate. Upon release, Deadliest Warrior slummed it with 4s and 5s from various outlets, but did manage the odd 6 or 7 out of 10 here and there, which is the best you could possibly expect from something like Deadliest Warrior. Pipeworks and Spike also made sure that the game, which was originally priced at $10, had an ass-ton of DLC. Lots of picture packs, weapons with slight stat variations, armors, and eventually even additional characters. Following that, a sort of semi-sequel slash update was released, Deadliest Warrior Legends, which centered around real historical figures, which is probably what they should have done originally, instead of just uh, Viking and Samurai. There was even a third release, if you can believe it, which was known as Ancient Combat. This packed in the content from the first two games and added even more on top of it, like new stages and modes, so if you really really needed your Deadliest Warrior fix, well, this was certainly a package that existed. But today we're focusing on the first version, the OG, the one that started it all, and we might as well begin with the depressing, soulless trappings that they call the- This is gonna be rough, I can tell you that for free. The presentation in Deadliest Warrior is just... 
weird. Like, you know that aesthetic of old, dead multiplayer games where you just wander the environment interacting with nothing? Yeah, that's essentially the vibe here. First off, the menus and general front end are really basic and devoid of any stylistic value. I mean, they are modeled after the show, and I get how there probably wasn't much wiggle room there, but that still doesn't mean they ain't boring. Selecting a fighter, sorry, a warrior, is much the same. A model loads in, and they eerily sway back and forth with their dead eyes not focused on anything in particular. These auraless mannequins include the following Apache, Centurion, Knight, Ninja, Pirate, Samurai, Spartan, and finally, Viking. Yep, it launched with only eight characters. The DLC included Shaolin, Rajput, and Zande, and to be fair, these three were bundled in a pack for $5, which is a hell of a lot better than the pricing we see today, so yeah, big ups for that. The real issue with the game's presentation, though, is this, or, or rather, the lack of this. The complete absence of music is such a bizarre choice as it leaves you fighting in utter silence, uh, save for the 1001 Nature Sound Effects CD, of course. Think about how much this might change things, say, in Street Fighter 2 or Killer Instinct, lacking the element that really helps drive the action and into the climax of any given match. <laughs> Deadliest Warrior does have these little character-specific fanfares that play whenever a round is awarded to someone, but it's just not enough. This exclusion means you shouldn't be shocked that the game also doesn't have any endings for your chosen warrior, or even an end boss. Like, come on, why can't we fight Nobunaga or, I don't know, Al Albert Einstein. I mean, I'm not up on my history, but I'm pretty sure that dude was a fighting machine. Well then, what do you get at the end? Well, if you weapon unlock, say, stat screen, and then hard cut to the credits. <laughs> I'm not joking. Would it have killed them to have added at least a little biography on each warrior? I mean, if you're not going to entertain me, at least educate me. As for the in-game visuals, I mean, listen, they're serviceable for the most part, but it does have this dark, muddy look to everything. I mean, it is a budget title after all, but I really would have preferred, like, the stages to feel, I don't know, alive? Cheering fans or a crowd of onlookers would have at least done something to help immerse you into each time period slash country, especially since some of the stages are literally built for this, such as the Greek amphitheater or this, um, Ren Fair. But nope, barren and empty, like they're just cheap sound stages on a TV set. What's worse is that even though there's only eight fighters from around the world, there's not even enough stages to support them all. A bunch of the characters, therefore, just share the same stomping grounds, and in many cases, they don't even fit them, such as the Apache appearing on the Jungle Temple stage, alongside the Pirate. This has always bothered me regardless of the game, like, I know if you have a 30-plus roster, it becomes a bit untenable, but there's only 8 Deadliest Warriors! I, I gotta chalk this up to the game's shoestring budget, which, you know, is totally on brand. Oh, but you know what else? is on brand! Deadliest Warrior is one of the most random fighters I've ever played, as you can start off every match doing the exact same thing and almost always wind up with a different result, and I, and I don't mean that in any way approaching good. Roll the clip! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes things will hit and nothing happens, and other times things will hit and you'll suddenly win or lose in a lot of cases. It seems to me that individual body parts have more importance than others, with the head obviously being critical, so a wayward dart or throwing knife can often take you out when you least expect it, which will lead one to often say, 
Dude, there was nothing I could do. This illustrates the biggest issue with the mechanics though, projectile spam. Yeah, everyone has a limited stock, but they do tons and tons of damage. And like I outlined, can often win a round in one shot. I think a better way to handle this would be to have unlimited projectiles, but then have a cooldown after every use, as being able to rapidly fire them in a combo is kind of the core of the problem. Aside from the standard low, mid, and high attacks spread between two selectable weapons, every character has one move unique to them, and basically functions as a special, like a powerful kick, shield bash, jumping dive, etc. And honestly, that's one of the few things that differentiates each fighter, the warrior. This is because their move lists have tons of overlap, the same basic thrusts, slashes, and short combos, which isn't exactly the type of wind that's going to be blowing up any skirts. Each f war warrior has at least a few different stats, so the ninja and apache are a bit more quick-footed than the viking or the knight, but it doesn't make a ton of difference. I'm aware they're going for more of a realistic style here, but honestly, if you're trying to make a fun video game, more creative special moves would have helped a whole lot. What would have also helped is throws, something Deadliest Warrior's combat simply doesn't offer. Like, there must be some historical text somewhere that states in ancient times the act of throwing, suplexing, or powerbombing someone simply didn't exist yet, which means I can add another book to my book-burning mobile. Not sure why Pipeworks didn't include such a fundamental building block of a fighting game's moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, but it was certainly a choice, I guess. A shit one. So, the general combat isn't really anything special, with even a parry system not being enough to save it because it's a bit clunky and not really satisfying to use. What is a bit more satisfying is the fatalities, or executions in this case. These are performed by usually pressing two different buttons together, which results in the screen darkening and your warrior performing a big telegraphed wind-up hit, and can be done anytime your opponent's health is pretty low. If this manages to connect, you'll be treated to a, more often than not, decent finishing animation. None of them are fantastical or over the top, but they're fine for what they are. And, of course, anything that references the cinematic tour de force that was 2004's Troy is okay in my book. What's less okay is the blood and gore effects, as they just look like blurry red paint. There's just no uh, moistness to it, and let's just move on. And really, that's all there is to Deadliest Warrior. There's the arcade mode, which at least lets you unlock new weapons and armor pieces, training, and multiplayer, both local and online, with the latter, of course, being deader than all of the warriors themselves. So, uh, things aren't looking so good for Spike TV's inaugural entry in their blockbuster fighting franchise. So let's see if it does any better with its... Regrettably, or thankfully in Pit Fighter's case, Deadliest Warrior handles fairly well. You have full 3D movement of the arena, the motion capture animated moves are nice and tight, and nothing feels too slow or too twitchy. But I have to say, it really doesn't feel much like a traditional fighting game at all, which I guess is what they were going for? It's more akin to something like a methodical action game with a versus mode component, if that makes any sense. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not inherently a bad thing, and you can definitely feel the difference, but it's way better than a number of contenders we've had in this tournament before. With all that now said and out in the open, this will at least make for a fairly interesting placement in our rankings. Or will it? So, with a dire presentation, really lackluster mechanics, a paltry selection of modes and content, and so-so game feel, where does that leave these legendary warriors? Could they possibly defeat the salty man-sweat of Pit Fighter? Not quite. This, the first entry in the DW series, is undoubtedly the worst one, because each subsequent release added more and more content, so if this can't behead Ty, Kato, and Buzz, the later revisions don't have a chance. 
And honestly, with a decent game feel, Deadliest Warrior can be 40 minutes of dumb fun, so I think that's enough to place it in the that'll be just fine, as it doesn't really do anything egregiously unforgivable, unlike you know who. So that's another battle in our Bloodstained tournament in the bag. And if you out there know of any other young pathetic lions you'd like to throw in our arena, check out previous episodes or the tier list before any suggestions, as yes, I've done Rise of the Robots before, shout them out in the comments below or fire a messenger arrow over into my social medias. And until then, warriors, I'll see you next time on the worst fighting game.